So that these are the effects favor for diabetic nephropathy. Number one, you have persistent arrhythmia. This is a more favorable for diabetic nephropathy. If you have extremely proteinuria, more than six gram per deciliter, you have to think about another causes. It's not the diabetic nephropathy. If you have a bland urinary sediment, you have a favor for diabetic nephropathy. If you have a persistent uh, hematuria, there might be the other goals, even in the patient with diabetes. If you have a slow progression of disease, there might be diabetic nephropathy. If you have a rapidly falling EGFR, there might be other causes. You have to look in for the other causes. And then you can see the other complication of diabetes in case of diabetic nephropathy, but in other causes of the nephropathy, there, there has not been the complication of the diabetes. Another one is, if you save DKD in type 2, at least duration of diabetes should be more than 5 years. But if you have a duration of less than 5 years, family history or, or hereditary disease or polycystic kidney disease, you have to think about the other causes of the DKD. So you have to differentiate even in the patient with diabetes, is it due to DKD or is it due to the other causes? So these are the, I'm not going through everything. Only thing I would like to suggest is we don't know preclinical nephropathy. Only thing we can identify is incipient nephropathy, hyperinfiltration, microalbumia, raising blood pressure. This is a time we can look at and then we can find out. So later on, there might be hypertension and there might be rising serum creatinine and decreasing GFR. So we have to catch the diabetic nephropathy at that stage, in CVN nephropathy. That's why we always advise all the primary care physicians, please do urinary ACR. ACR. If you do the creatinine, if creatinine is up, there will be half of the GFR gone. So please do ACR. If you see ACR, you have to put on the drugs which delay the progression of the renal disease. Say, supposing for hypertension, you use drugs inhibitor, ACI or ARB. If you have a diabetic drugs, you have to use SGLD2 inhibitor at that stage because the EGFI less than 45. 2090 ADA clearly and find that if you have Maformi, next to Maformi, you ask the question, do you have CKD? If you have CKD, you start SGLD2. So that is the stage for the SGL2. Later on, there might be no rules of SGL2. This is very much important. So when you look at these things, number one, primary care physician has to be screening for CKD risk factor in every diabetic patient. Number two, if you see uh, one risk factor, you have to reduce the risk factor and you screen for CKD. Number three, if you see risk ACR and then reduce GFR, you diagnose CKD and you treat comorbid and you delay the progression. If you have a down GFR, you estimate the progression, you treat the complication, prepare for replacement, later on and you go for the replacement theory. These are the steps you have to do. So I would like to advise all the primary care physicians, number one, step one is to identify and evaluate the patient at risk of CKD in every diabetes patient. Number two, you detect CKD. Number three, you manage CKD, reduce the cardiovascular risk, slow the CBD, CKD progression, minimize or further kidney injury. Use a rust inhibitor to help the progression of the disease. Later on, you refer to the nephrology. This is the thing you have to do. So these are the all the things is a you the, all the uh, summary of the the things you have to do for the patient with their diabetes. Number one, you test the same determine the cause, severity, complication, risk of progression, CBD risk, comorbid, treat the underlying cause, reversible further. For intervention or to delay the progression, you use the ACI or ARB, blood pressure control, glycemic control, protein resistance. And these are the prevention and treatment of the uremic complication, malnutrition, anemia, osteodystrophy, acidosis. That's it, Professor Kindriatwin has been already mentioned. 
and you prevent and treat the comorbid systemic hypertension, cardiovascular disease, diabetic complication, other comorbid, and then you prepare for security. So this is the complete things. So what are the risk factors? Risk factors are you have a genetic factor, you have a glycemic control, high blood pressure, lipid, smoking, long standing DM, pregnant, poor nutrition, overweight, unhealthy diet, physical inactivity, these are the risk factors you have to look in for every patient of the diabetes. So if you have a patient, you have a parents with the, you know, neither you have, your parents neither have protein, you still have a chance of 40%. One parent had protein, you have 23% chance of the TKD. If you have both parents had the protein, you, are, you have 45% chance of TKG. So family history is so much important for the TKG. So this is the thing what you have to do. If you are in the primary care physician, I advise you to look at this slide. Number one, who should scream? Type one, after five years of the diagnosis. Type two, at the time of diagnosis. Number two, what do you order? You order GFR, you order UCR, urinary albumin creatinine ratio. If you have GFR less than 30, ACR more than 60, this is the answer you refer to Professor Kendira. So you refer to the nephrologist. If you want an EGFR more than 60, ACR less than 2 or 3, whatever it is, no DKD, you annually screen. But the in between is EGFR. 30 to 59, ACR 2 to 6, CKD present, you have to manage. But these are the things you need to do. So, referral criteria is for less than 30. But during this time, during this time, when EGFR between 30 to 59, you're managing the diabetic nephropathy, you have to go for optimal glycemic control, you have to go for optimal blood pressure control, you use the ACE and EMDR, as, and you assess the CBD rigs, you use a sturdy, you use the aspirin if you need it. At that time, you have to refer to nephrology even though GFI is good. When you found out that there's a chronic progressive loss of kidney function, even though you are treating, you refer. Unable to maintain or renal protective therapy due to adverse side effects such as hyperkalemia, you refer. And if you have to target BP with glucose, you refer to nephrologist, you refer to diabetologist. Don't forget diabetologist. You need the glucose. CFM, caring for well-being.